That's right. Woo! It's going to be a big one today. We got your boy. We got your boy, Bill Hap. We got your boy, Bill Hap. Oh, you know what I did? I did this again. I did it the other day. I did it again. I meant to not do it, but I forgot to move my intro over into the thing so we can't do. You know what we're going to do? Here's what we're going to do. We're just going to do this. Pam. business conference in Nashville, Tennessee this year, but there's a twist. It's not just a business conference. It's the largest business conference with a missional mindset. It's why we reinvent, reinvent, reinvent. Why we reinvent? Well, the game has changed. You are more powerful than the outside world. Nothing can stop you. How can we spread our message in the largest and quickest way? Be the guy that's working. Be the guy that deals off. Be the guy that everybody else wants to point at. Victory is in your veins. It feels normal because it is. Listen to me, if Saka Dyson could go from poverty to being a president of his own company, I want you to say, I can too. Do you believe that what you do matters? We continue to rise, evolve, and make a massive impact. There we go. Got to turn the microphone on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is Friday, August 9th, 2019. That's right. It's Friday, August 9th, 2019. And what's crazy is today is the very first and very last time it'll ever be Friday, August 9th, 2019. It's also one week away. One week from Grow Your Business for God's Sake in Nashville, Tennessee. I believe I just saw Mr. Brian Benstock is on the feed live with us this morning. He's going to be one of the incredible speakers that's going to be out there with me in Nashville, Tennessee next week. You're not going to want to miss it. It's an incredible event. We have awesome partners that have helped us make the experience unlike anything you've ever experienced before at an incredibly affordable cost, including Car Saver. Car Saver of Walmart. If you are a dealer, dealership, you're looking for the Grow Your Business for God's sake. At Grow Your Business. to do with my... There, I just switched over. Man, I'm sorry about that. There you go. Everybody's back. All right. <laughs> I love it. That was crazy. It dropped down to, it like kicked everybody out down to 17 people. Now we're back up to 62. That's what I'm talking about. Sorry about that, guys. I don't really know what happened, but let's just move on. So one week from today, grow your business for God's sake. It's going to be incredible. Get your tickets. Go out there and get them. Okay. <laughs> With that said, dude, we've got the incredible, the omnipresent, the one and only Bill Have is going to be on our show today because I thought, here's what I thought, okay? We've been talking all week. You won't get booted anymore, Eric Burns. I picked it. You, you won't get booted anymore, Eric. Just stay right where you're at. Don't go anywhere. So this week, we've been talking about moving, right? We've been talking about moving in our careers, moving forward in our careers, and this process of where at first, if we want to move forward in our career, yeah, not the final destination, but what's the next step, right? Then from there, and this is going to drive me crazy if it does this again. I know what it's trying to do. The internet's trying to keep you from Bill Hab. And we, can, we can't have that. There we go. I'm not going to let that happen. Okay, there we go. Now we shouldn't have that problem anymore. Okay, cool. So, uh, we've been talking about 
first identifying like what's the next step what's the destination then from there going in and removing all of the clutter right getting the things out of the way that have been holding you back in your career right removing the clutter the people the so on and so forth then from there we talked about once you remove the clutter it exposes your weaknesses where are you weak man are you awful on the phones are you also at handle awful at handling of objections are you lazy at work are you lazy? Are you spending four hours scrolling on social media when you need to be out there hustling, grinding, and selling, right? Exposing your weaknesses. Then we talked about repairing those weaknesses, like actually training to get stronger and finding someone that's doing what you want to do at the level that you want to do it so that you can have that person as a mentor, as a coach, or whatever, so they can pull you up and teach you how to do things the right way. Lastly, once all of that happens, you can move forward in your career. So we've been talking about that all week. And I thought, man, right in this process, as we are talking about this, my boy, Bill Hab, who's been selling cars for years, who's one of the most well-known car salespeople in the industry. The dude's a wild man. He's crazy, right? And you see him all over. He's effectively used social. He's been highly successful in his career as a car salesman salesman and the dude just made a move he just made a move this week i watched it i watched him make the move live right that's what's crazy about today's day and age you can see people's chaos so i watched him make the move and i thought who better to have on the show this week than my man bill have so we're going to be talking to bill have here in just a second before we do i went and got me some bill have music that's right i went and found some music that makes me feel a little bill Havish. For those of you that know, and those of you that don't know, this is the part of the show where I need you to hit that share button. That's right. I need you to hit that share button. Because I believe if we can change the way people start their day, it'll make a massive impact on this planet. I truly believe that. Sometimes all you got to do to change the way somebody starts their day is hit that share button. This is also the part of the show where I'm going to say good morning to you. You're going to say good morning to me, whether you're watching live or you're watching on replay. Say what's up. I'll say what's up back. How you doing, Gail B. Craft? What's up, Philip Peterson, Jennifer Jaskell, Vicki Everett's up in here. How you doing, Catherine Bennett and Josh? Oh, Jeremy Noling's up in here. What's up, Scott Holbert and Angela Heath? I'm seeing all types of new names. What's up, Whitney Wells, Terrell Lake? How you doing, Brad Smith and Pam Biddle? Again, what's up, Brian Benstock? How are you, sir? Susie McKinney's up in here. What's up, Baron Washington? Susie McKinney, no sound. You might want to pop out and pop back in. What's up, Janelle Griego? Don Sankey's up in here. Who else is up in here? Look at all these names. Can you believe all these people are up in here, Bill Have at 5.30 in the morning? What's up, Scott Simons? What's up, Leanne Brooks? G John Paul Guidry, Tony Thurstad, Justin Lemke, Laura Berman, Mike Brockway, Wayne Self. Everybody's up in here on hashtag rise and grind. You've done it. You've hit the share button. You know. What's up, John Calton Burn? Calton Born? I'm working on that name. Calton Born. Hi, Mabel. Mabel Peralta's up in here. All right, you've done it. You've hit. I believe I saw Megan Sexy. What's up, Megan Sexy? She's on the comeback. That's what I'm talking about. Terry LaPierre. All right, so you've done it. You've hit the share button. You're ready. We're going to bring in the one and only, the dude that just got a tattoo yesterday on his thigh that says 100K, the one and only, Mr. Bill. Have Bill have Bill have Bill have what's up my man how are you oh man I am great I can't believe I'm up at 5 30 right now and not <laughs> no light <laughs> bro you're up at at 5 30 you're doing it let's talk about that a little bit most of the people that I have on my show right I, I interview a lot of highly successful individuals on my show yeah. on Friday, and most of them have this powerful rocket and rolling morning routine. However, my man Bill Hab, you struggle a little bit in the morning. Let's talk about that. What what's up with that, man? What's up with your morning struggles? Man, ever since I was a kid, I've been you know sleeping in, and I haven't ever woke up and had a really good morning routine, and. Uh, it, man, been, 
It sucks, man. I wish I could wake up earlier, but it's just tough. I got to start. I really do because I feel great right now. Yeah, I took sleeping pills at like 7 p.m. last night to assure myself that I would wake up to be here today. Right, right. <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about what time you go to bed, bro. What time do you go to bed? Oh, man, it's bad. My brain can't turn off. I go to bed around 2, 3, 4 maybe. Yeah. I watched your show yesterday and I just stayed up all night. Once right. it's like 4 o'clock, I'm like, I might as well stay up for, for Rise and Grind. There's no going back now. So at four o'clock, I'm like, screw it. I'm staying up all night and watching Rise and Grind. Right. 5.30 a.m. 5.30 a.m. That's what I quickly look. Oh, man, look. Looks like it's super dark in here because I lost that one light. That's what, uh, that's what, what's up, Jimmy Phillips? Jimmy Phillips just popped in here, Bill Have. He's the local radio DJ. He's the man out of here in Lexington. But that's one thing that, that uh, I realized as I started working on the morning routine. It wasn't so much about the mornings as it was the decisions I made the night before, right? Like, it's hard to get up at 5 a.m. if you're going to bed at 3 it's a little yeah. bit it's a little bit tough, right? But I get it, man. Your brain's rocking and rolling and you've been in certain routines and habits for a really long time. And I'm just giving you a little bit of grief because I know uh and you know I've been telling you for years that Bill Hab's really gonna blow up when Bill Hab yeah. gets a solid morning routine. Yeah, absolutely, man. I've been really considering the seventy five hard challenge because all my friends are doing it. And now that now that I'm not at a brick and mortar building every day for 10 hours. Now I think I may be doing it. I think PJ Quinn and Delco, I think they got me on it, man. I think I'm going to start the 75 hard and wake up early and work out twice a day. Bro, that's 75 hard, man. What a smart. Okay. Let's look at, let's look at this. Let's look at this from a, from a marketing aspect, from a business aspect, right? So these guys, yeah. Andy Frisella and Ed Milet, right? They released the 75 hard challenge. And part of the 75 hard challenge is that you have to post every single day that you're doing the 75 hard challenge. Like that's part of the <laughs> challenge. They've challenged right. people to post that they're doing the challenge every single day. So yep. from a marketing standpoint, my feed, because I'm surrounded by beasts, Right, like yeah. Scott Simon, and like you said, PJ Quinn, Velco, all of these guys are beasts, and so I'm watching them like rock out with their pecs out every single day in my feed, fifty times a day, and I'm like feeling like I just feel soft right now, right? Like I don't feel yeah. it makes me want to get out there and do the challenge myself. Look, everybody's talking about it; they're all up in it. Seventy five hard. It is genius from a marketing standpoint. Talk about genius marketing. Bill Have, you've been selling cars for five years, man. How did you get to be one of the most well-known salespeople in the business? Yeah, man, I, I, I'm just obsessed, or I was obsessed. I've, uh, I've always taken everything to the next level, and I believe in be obsessed or be average, and I literally took these ideas that were in my head and instead of not doing anything with them i fed them and i watered them and and i just made sure that them ideas came to reality as an example i had five billboards in my life i've given away four free cars to families in need and it all started as an idea in my head driving to work or you know collaborating with my friend just having a regular conversation and then it turning into oh my god i should do this or i should do that and I believe that the difference between the middle class and the multimillionaires, the only difference is massive action. Because everybody has them ideas. Everybody has those inventions. Or everybody has those thoughts of I should do this or that. And the only difference between successful people and, and unsuccessful people, I don't mean unsuccessful, but just not as successful, is massive action. And I truly feel that if I just take massive action on all my ideas and players' talents and just everything that I know that I was born to do, if I can take everything and take massive action, I believe there is absolutely no way that I can fail. I know we had a conversation the other day and uh, we were kind of talking and said, you know, worse can worse. I can always sell cars. You can always, you as an example, can always have an ownership or partnership and a dealership. And um, you corrected me, man. You're like, no, you know, there's no turning back. And, you know, that's not worst case scenario. Worst case scenario is you fail and you keep going as an entrepreneur. So it is not an option to go back. Um, it, it's, it's only been four days, but it's been the best four days of my life, the freedom and getting that monkey off my back of knowing that I have so much more potential than what I'm doing and working for somebody else. And I'm sick of selling somebody else's stuff. 
it's time for me to sell Bill Habs stuff, sell Bill Habs content, sell Bill Habs hard work, and sell Claire's, you know, hard work. Because what she's doing is is so amazing. The first module of my course for the Claire Repair is going to be have a Claire, be a Claire, or get a Claire. Because if you don't have a Claire, or if you can't get a Claire, or if you can't be a Claire, then this business does not work the way that it is for me. So it has been going so phenomenal, man. And I'm just taking massive action on all these ideas I got going on. And I'm not, I'm not worrying about what people think about me. I'm not worried about failing. I'm just going out there and I'm getting it, man. Because like the nail says, it, it changed my life. This quote, it's not about if you win or not. It's about who loses if you don't win. And that hits me to my core. It, it does something to me, man. And that quote alone, I think is what made me quit my job. Wow, man. Yeah. That, that quote, from Danelle is one that's always stuck with me for a long time, but I want to back up a little bit. You talked about the obsession, just being, being obsessed, coming up with these creative ideas and actually taking action on them. Like I love how you, cause there's car, there's, there's salespeople, not just car salespeople, there's salespeople all across the country, right? There's salespeople that stand out. There's salespeople that struggle. There's salespeople that stay kind of right in the, right in the middle. And you took ideas like, okay, I'm going to find a way to how to give away f free cars. I'm going to put my yeah. face up on billboards. I'm going to do, you know, you did crazy things on lives. You had drones and, you know, all of these, all of these different things. And I know from personal experience with you, your obsession, because you would message me all the time, like Glenn, help me raise more money i need to, i need a nicer car i'm trying to i want to really make sure i take care of this family i want to make sure right like you would message me i'd be like bill i heard you bro i heard you the first <laughs> time and the second time and the seventh time and the 20th time and it was always respectful yeah. it wasn't rude but you were obsessed right. with this idea of making it bigger <sighs> and better right right and right. and and it worked. It, it it really worked for you. And I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of the 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 moves that you've made and the decisions you make. I think your timing is really really great on it because. And I want to clarify this with all the other people that are in their jobs right now, going, well, maybe I want to leave, but I I do I have to leave? Do I have to go work for myself to be happy and successful? And that's not the case at all. I just want to clarify something that you and Claire right? Which is your amazing spouse, which you would be yeah. absolutely worthless without just so you know, yeah. we all we all know this. <laughs> That's no secret. <laughs> but you and Claire together, you had your second child, right? Our second together, my third total. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. you're say your, your second child together, and you started to decide, okay, wait a minute. There's got to be a little bit better way. What services can we provide? How can we help more people? And I love the name. Have oh. clarity. Like I told my wife, she's like, that's strong. So, <laughs> so let's, let's, let's talk about this. And I don't want to just like tell your story. I want you to share it, but I just think it's so impactful that you took your knowledge. So you were always like, you always attracted and you always sought out bad credit customers yeah. in your career, right? Like bad credit was your thing. Yep. And now is that because maybe I'm maybe, maybe Bill have has had an 800 credit score his whole life. I don't know, but is no that, let, let's talk no about way. who you used to be a little bit because you used to be a little bit like me, didn't you? You used to be like a little bit of a punk, didn't you? Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. I was the biggest punk. Um, so I come from a background where everybody in my family has been to jail. Nobody ever graduated high school, let alone college. Um, you know, everybody in my family itself doesn't care about their credit score. They don't finance cars. I grew up driving Hopeties with my parents, you know. So uh, I come from a background of, you know, not very successful people. My dad's currently in prison. He's been in prison since I was 14, and he got 20 to 40 years when I was 14. So that's just to give you a little bit of a background of where I come from. So when I started selling cars, it, well, I, met a, I met the guy in the barber shop. I'm getting my hair cut, and the general manager is talking to me or I'm sorry, the guy next to me is talking to me and he turns out to be the general manager of a dealership and offers me a job. So long story short, I started selling cars, but I didn't know who to market to. The first store that I ever started to work at, their slogan was when you're lost, you're here. 
they were in the middle of cornfields and it was the Hyundai store and um, they were in the middle of nowhere. So I knew if I was going to sell a lot of cars and bring a lot of people in, I'd have to use Facebook and bring my own people in. But my own people have bad credit. My own people think I can't afford a car like that or I can't get approved. So I had to start right away marketing towards if you have bad credit, I can help you. And we don't even want to talk about what my credit score was. So I felt their pain. So when I started to get a couple of people approved and I started doing dashboard diaries, it really gave me the motivation to really just take this and to, to go big with it and to give cars away. The first car giveaway I did, I had to give away my own personal car because I couldn't afford to give away one. And uh, at that time, I didn't come up with the GoFundMe and, you know, donate 2500 and then have people donate. Right. So I, I literally gave away my own free car and just taken the massive action. But that's why I had to start with people who didn't have who were looking to establish or reestablish their credit. Right. So I just took it big. And about a year later, I met Jonathan Dawson at an IHOP. I saw he was in my in, in my area. And I said, hey, brother, would you mind, you know, if I met up with you and just like with you, man, always reaching out, always trying to connect and, and just surround myself around people who are like you and then Jonathan Dawson. So the day that changed my life was when I met up with him and he taught me. He grabbed a crayon and a kid's color menu and started right now SWAT. So that's what this tattoo is. It's the four things that a bank is looking for when they're considering giving anybody a loan. So it's stability, willingness, ability, and track record. So that has been my, literally my rock in my career because when I have a customer who's looking to establish or reestablish their credit, they sit down at my desk and I go over with them and, I, and I'm educating them now on the process. I tell everybody, it's not your fault if you're unreasonable or if you don't know how to buy a car because you don't do it every day. I right. do it every single day. So it's my job to explain to you what they're looking for. And it, bro, it's taken off 1,200 plus sold customers for people who have bad credit. And it clicked to me. I said, I want to be an entrepreneur. And what am I going to do? I've been thinking this for a long time. And with Claire being a stay-at-home mom and with her being so smart and having such good work ethic and it just going to waste by being a stay-at-home mom and not putting those skills to use. She's a phenomenal mother. She's a phenomenal fiance. She takes care of us more than we could ever ask, but we we knew me and her that she she had so much more in her. Yeah. So we took this on, man, and we have not looked back. I lost my fiance to credit reports every time I see her, man. You know, she's got a baby on her lap or on her boob, or <laughs> she's doing five different things, cooking, and she's got credit reports, and she's on the phone, and she has just been so amazing. We have eighty four clients in our first forty seven days of business. Beautiful. So it and has been phenomenal. Yeah, that's beautiful. And I love it. I love that you found where you fit your thing, your passion, something that's always been there, right? Like I always say that your your purpose is something that never uh, expires or retires, right? It's something that it's been a part of you forever. You love doing it. You've been attracted to it. And I love that you've done that. And you've turned that into something that now your whole family can do. I've recently yeah. gone through that myself, man. My wife's up in there in the Rise and Grind studio. She's packing up, you know, T-shirts and hats, and she's yeah. she's helping now. And there's something powerful about uh, bringing her in to this side, right? Because she's always just been stay-at-home mom, which is the most incredible job on the planet, the hardest job on the planet. But now she's got some extra pep in her step because she's been able yeah. to join in um, and help with the business side of the business. So pretty crazy, man. How did you get out of being, the, let's talk about the, the, the bad guy in you, the bad, the bad side of you. You used to be a punk. You used to be in trouble. You used to be in and out of jail. How did you get out, man? How did you break the cycle? Because a lot of people in your situation around the world, daddy goes to jail. Granddaddy went to jail, son goes to jail, son, son goes to jail. We just perpetuate these cycles, typically. Mm -hmm. How did you break the cycle, man? <laughs> That's a great question. So looking back on it, it, it happened step by step, man, slowly but surely. So I lived with my mom. I just started selling cars. I met Claire at a bar. She literally, I was, I was a DD for my friend. And I'm at the bar and it's like 1.30 a.m. and everybody's drunk and bumping into each other, spilling drinks on me. And I'm not drinking, so I'm not having that much fun. So I'm in the corner. You know, I would imagine I didn't look too happy, just bored. And Claire comes up to me and pinches my butt in a bar. And I said, whoa. She goes, you don't look too happy. So she's, of course, attractive. And, you know, of course, I, I was interested in her. 
but she was wasted. So I'm like, I can't be hitting on a drunk girl, man. So I give her my business card and I can see her five friends like staring at me really hard, like being really good friends, making sure their friend was okay. So it was really from that point, man, I met Claire and I had no reason to do good other than myself. And for me, that wasn't enough. Right. So if I was only affecting myself, it didn't matter enough. So when I met Claire and, and I, I moved in with her at her apartment because I was living in my mom's house. I moved in with her at her apartment. And I think that's when it clicked to me that, man, I better do, do good or else this girl's going to have no interest in me. There's no reason for her to be with me. She dated a finance manager at another dealership who made like 150 grand a year. And here I am, you know, making next to nothing, just starting in the car business. Sure. So it was from meeting her at that point. And then um, it's a crazy story, man. So I met Claire while um, Julian's mother was pregnant with him. So me and Julian's mom, we were never together, you know? So it was a really, it's a really unfortunate situation because we've never loved each other, never been together. So when I met Claire, you know, I had baby mama drama and I didn't right. even know if he was my son. So for Claire to even still have interest in me, knowing what was going on, it, it was phenomenal. And for her to have that much faith in me. So when, when my son was born, I was on unemployment. I met Claire, I was selling cars, but then when I met Claire, all I wanted to do would be around her. I didn't want to be at the dealership for 12 hours a day. So I definitely was not a good employee. I would call off when I did come in, I was hung over. So, um, you know, just, just having my son, having people who rely on me is when, when it's not about just you anymore and it's about other people who rely on you. That was what just clicked for me in my head, man, that it's, and Danelle's quote, man, oh my gosh, it gives me the goosebumps every time I think about it. It hits me in my core to where I can literally break down and start crying when I talk to people about it. Right. It's not about if you win or not. It's about who loses if you don't win. And literally, when when I started to, you know, think like that and think, you know, do I want to go to work today or do I want to call off? No, hell no, I can't call off. I got, I got people who rely on me. So I think just over time and just going to work every day and then selling 20 cars a month, 25, 30 cars, you get so much momentum that there's no looking back. Yeah, man. You know, I have no choice, man. There's five people who rely on me for my income. That's right. And, and that's when it just clicks in your head, man, that there's no more, no more going back. Yeah, you're 100% right, man. I just spoke to some kids. I was speaking at the uh, Black Achievers at the uh, YMCA here in Paris, and that was the one main point I was I was like trying to hammer into these young people is once you or me becomes we, there's another level. As soon as your me becomes we, everything changes. That's how I broke out as well. When I lived life for me, it was homeless, jail, Yes. All of that. When it was when it was me, my life sucked. It was yes. awful. I thought it was great at the time. Looking back, <laughs> it sucked, bro. <laughs> but once it became we, once <laughs> everything, once I shifted my focus, everything in my life became we. Yeah. <sighs> The world expands, man. I believe that's what we were designed for is to come here and make an impact on other people's lives. So super, super strong. I'm glad that you touched on that. We're already, this show goes by so fast. So we're already like right here at the end, but I'm going to, I'm going to ask you two last questions and then we'll get out of here. So the first one is, so how did you get the courage to make the leap, bro? You're making good money. Real good yep. money in the car business. You're well known. You're comfortable. You could flip a switch and sell 30 cars. That'd be easy. It'd be easy yeah. for you now, right? You could just flip a switch and do it. How'd you how'd you get the courage to take the leap and go out on your own? Yeah, so the courage what gave me the courage, man, is the credit repair business. So I was selling cars. We started the business on June twenty fifth. I was still selling cars. And our first month in credit repair we made ten thousand dollars. So on top of my 10,000 or 12,000, whatever I made, you know, that was $22,000 for that month. And I barely worked, man. Like I'm telling, when I say I barely worked, I barely worked. I was at the dealership maybe two weeks, you know, sold 18 cars. So, um, you know, to do credit repair and to do that, I knew that if I took all my time and energy and put it into the credit repair, that we can make 20, 25, $30,000 a month and I can scale this thing. And my goal is to automate it so it runs itself. And then, um, you know, do courses, man, just, just like you do and, and teach other people and, you know, give my knowledge and Claire's knowledge of what we learned so far. And, you know, like I've, I've paid 250 for webinars before, man, and they, they stank compared to what me and Claire can do. So we're going to turn this office right here into a studio 
And we are going to teach a course for four weeks on how to start your own credit repair company and on how we made $10,000 our first month in credit repair. And we're going to blow this thing up, man. Just like you blew up Rise and Grind, we we're going to blow this thing up. And that's what gave me the confidence to leave car sales is having that side hustle that turned into a hustle that could be big enough to be my main one. But you know it, man. The average millionaire has five sources of income. So I'm grinding. I'm working. My brain's on 100 miles per hour on how I can make this $100,000 per month. 100k per month you crazy dude just got a tattoo on your thigh that says 100 grand a month <laughs> you're nuts yeah, dude hey yeah. you're you're going from pennsylvania to uh you're gonna be in nashville next week with me right yes i cannot wait dude, it's on my calendar and i'm i'm talking to claire every day about it we're pumped man you and claire are going to nashville why are you going what are you hoping to get out of grow your business for god's sake next week Man, the speakers, the speakers are just so fire. You, Shaka Dyson, Danielle Delgado, just people who I envy, people who I look up to, people who have, I'm sorry, when you say what gave me the courage to do this, you gave me the courage, man. Guys like you who who take them chances, man. When you're a general manager at number two dealership in the, in the country, I know you're making some serious money. So for you to take that leap to be home with your family and your kids more and, and to do that, man. Oh, it's so fire. I got the goosebumps just talking about it, man. <laughs> so it's guys like you who inspire me. So I really, I really apologize. That truly should have been my answer because if you can do it, so can I. So I forget what the question was now, man. Next week, what are you hoping to get out of? Next week, yeah. So I am hoping for Claire to meet them, Danelle, uh -huh. just because she always hears about her and hears how much she's inspired me. Um, I cannot wait to see Shaka speak. Um, I mean, the, the name of the conference is Grow Your Business, for God's sake. You know, we just started a business, right. so the timing could not be any better. Um, it's at a church, you know, so I love that. I love that aspect of it. We can bring our kids, and your kids are going to be there. Danelle's kids are going to be there. Yep. So I'm looking forward to most just being in that environment, man, and just being so inspired and, and hearing Shaka speak and, you know, to hear you speak and Danelle and just Steve Brewster. And I'm missing a lot of people, man, but they're they're all phenomenal. You did a great job, man. I cannot wait. We're actually driving because we're not flying with, with three little kids. Man. <laughs> all we're, right. <laughs> we're going to drive, you know, take pit stops and, you know, not have yeah, to take your time. So well, we're so well, excited, man. Can't well, wait. Well, I'm super glad you're coming, man. It is going to be fire. It's going to be off the chain. We got to get out of here. We're running late. But one last question for you, and then we got to go. Bill Hab, you're up on top of a mountain, brother. You are on top of a mountain. And all of civilization, everybody, they're looking up at you. And they're going, have clarity, have clarity, have clarity, have clarity. <laughs> right? They're cheering because you, you helped them with their credit. You helped them repair their credit. And you helped them create their own credit repair businesses so they could help other people repair their credit. And so you did. And they're like, have clarity, have clarity, have clarity. And all of civilization's looking at you. And you have two minutes to drop one piece of wisdom. One, peep, one piece. What are you going to drop on them? What are you going to tell them? I'm going to tell them that you get a certain feeling from failure that you don't get from success. They are two different feelings and you need both of them, you know, and, and when it comes to just getting the ball rolling, man, just do it, you know, just, just take them chances. Just don't be scared. Don't be worried about what people think about you. Don't be worried about failing and just take massive action, man. That's, that's what I've been thinking in my head this whole time is you get what you think about whether you want it or not. You have to manifest it in your head before it actually happens. I got this tattoo, man, on my thigh. Who does that? But the reason I did it was to pull my shorts up a little bit to see that 100K per month and remind me to keep grinding. You know, so, I mean. I love it. People get in their head, bro, and people stop themselves from doing great things because they're too scared. You know, and don't be scared. Don't be scared because everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. That's right. You're 100% right. If it's not okay, it's not the end. I love it. Don't let the fear keep you from making the moves, right? Take yes. risks, take, take chances. Risks. And there's things that you can only learn from failure. I love that because there's so much truth to it. Bill Hab, you're an amazing human being, bro. I'm really proud of you. I'm excited to watch what you and Claire do. And I need you guys to follow Bill Hab. He's crazy. You'll love his posts. He's absolutely crazy. Follow Bill Hab. If you have credit issues, 
contact Bill Hab. They can fix your credit. It's awesome. And if you want to learn how to help other people fix their credit, you can do that with Bill Hab too. But Bill, dude, amazing human being, clearly uniquely made by the God of the universe to be the best version of yourself that you can possibly be, bro. And you're doing it. You're making good decisions. You're up early today. And I'm going to stay on you to keep getting up early. I'm feeling good, too, man. It feels good. I'm up before the sun. I know. I love it. But you're up early. But these things that you're doing, they're making an impact on your friends, on your family members, and all the people around you. And today, you've made an impact on us right here on the show, man. And I stink and love you for it. So thank you so much for being a part of Hashtag Rise and Grind, man. Oh, thank you so much for having me, man. I do. I love you so much, man. You're such an inspiration to me. So keep doing what you're doing, and thank you, man, for everything you do. I love you, brother. Thanks, my man. I appreciate you. Hang out right there for just a second. I'm going to go back over here. That was my man, Bill Hab. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that share button. Let's get this out to the rest of the world. And then as far as you go, you specifically, yes, I'm talking directly to you. I want you to have an incredible weekend, all right? You have an incredible weekend, and the next time you see me on Monday morning at 5.30 a.m., well, that's not true. I'm going to Nashville Monday. I'm going to Nashville Monday. I won't be there at 5.30 a.m. Monday, but I'm going to Nashville Monday for the Grow Your Business For God's Sake event. I'm going to be down there all week making sure that everything is in place, everything's perfect for an amazing, over-the-top experience, just unlike anything you've ever done before. That's it. That's all I'm going to tell you, unlike anything you've ever been a part of before. So if you're not already going, you still have time. You can pull a bill hab. You can jump in your car. You can drive down. You don't have to have airplane tickets or any of that good stuff. Meet me in Nashville. You're not going to want to miss it. But most importantly, if you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. If you need some Rise and Grind gear, go to glennlundy.com. And then come back here Monday morning, 5.30 a.m., we're going to do it all over again on hashtag arise and grind. Have an incredible day, my friends. Um, I don't want to go with that music. I want to go with this music. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs>